good morning, everyone. Um, while this meeting is primarily on um, crop load management, I do want to take this opportunity to briefly discuss uh, Honeycrisp nutrient management with the objective of reducing bitter pit incidence. Um, bitter pit in Honeycrisp is more of a nutrient balance issue than low calcium um, alone. Uh, our work over the last couple of years have shown this very clearly. Perhaps the best example is to look at how low crop load situation leads to um, imbalance of calcium with potassium, eventually leading to bitter pit, higher bitter pit risk. Um, and our low crop load situation, uh, each fruit gets more potassium which competes with the calcium for uptake into the fruit, leading to higher potassium to calcium ratio, and then the fruit run a higher risk of getting bitter pit. Um, I understand that this year, <coughs> we are gonna have a lot of return bloom. It's, a, it's an on year, but still uh, the same principle applies when you, um, when you uh, adjust your crop load um, using a precision crop load approach uh, outlined by uh, Terence and uh, Mario in a minute. <clears throat> now, because bitter pit is a nutrient balance issue, so we really need to take a nutrient balancing strategy to address this problem. This strategy includes two aspects. First, First is to increase calcium supply to fruit. Second is to reduce potassium, reduce the supply of potassium and other nutrients such as nitrogen to balance you know, these nutrients with calcium. Now let's look at the first aspect first. Um, we need to ensure um, not only the trees can take up enough calcium from the soil. Uh, for example, we need to adjust the soil pH to six and a half to seven, make sure the root growth is, uh, root growth normally, make sure there's enough soil moisture and enough micronutrients such as boron and zinc to ensure uptake of nutrients. I think perhaps more importantly is to ensure that the calcium taken up by the roots ends up in the fruit in a larger, in a large proportion. Um, this is where uh, pruning and nitrogen management comes in. Uh, so when you prune too heavily or when you apply too much nitrogen, the tree would grow more vigorously that draws most of the calcium taking up from the roots to shoots and leaves leaving very little calcium for fruit. Of course, when you apply too much nitrogen, nitrogen has other impacts, negative impacts, which we'll discuss in a minute. Uh, in the uh, next aspect, in the second aspect, that is reducing the supply of calcium, I'm sorry, reducing the supply of potassium and nitrogen to balance calcium with these nutrients. Before we leave in the first aspect, I do want to um, mention that foliar calcium spray, rather more precisely, it's a fruit calcium spray, is very important in increasing calcium supply to fruit. A, a typical program we have been recommending is that um, starting from seven to 10 days after petal fall, make three to four applications of calcium chloride at one and a half to two pounds per hundred gallon at two week intervals. So for a total of three to four applications and then followed by two additional applications at four weeks and two weeks before fruit harvest at a higher rate that is at three to four pounds of calcium chloride per hundred gallons of water. So this program should provide 
three and a half to four pounds of elemental calcium to the Honeycrisp trees, and which turns out to be an important threshold when it comes to um, using calcium chloride spray to reduce, to increase fruit calcium level, um, and then consequently reduce bitter pit incidence. If you don't apply enough elemental calcium, your foliar calcium spray or your fruit calcium spray, more precisely, uh, is limited in its effect. <clears throat> and I also want to emphasize that covering the fruit is, is most important because only the calcium that is taken up, that is uh, sprayed onto the fruit service will have an opportunity to take up you know, to be taken up by the fruit. So if you only target sort of the foliage, really the calcium spray onto the foliage doesn't help uh, with a calcium uptake into the fruit. So that's the first aspect of this nutrient balancing strategy. The second aspect is to reduce the supply of potassium. And in some cases, you know, nitrogen to balance calcium with these nutrients. Um, we emphasize in the past for Gala and Empire, these small fruited varieties, we emphasized potassium maintenance application, like 80 to 100 pounds of potash per acre per year. Of course, this number is dependent on yield. But with the Honeycrisp, we found that because Honeycrisp yield is generally lower than Gala and Empire, <laughs> Uh, because Gala and Empire, uh, because Honeycrisp typically have lower yield than uh, Gala and Honey, uh, than Gala and uh, Empire, we recommend a 25 to 30 percent potassium um, fertilization rate. Lower, you know, 25 to 30 percent lower potassium fertilization rate than Gala and Empire. If your soil, if your soil analysis shows that you have you know, 350 pounds of potassium in the soil already, you can just skip potassium fertilization for one or two years and then do leaf analysis um, to make decisions on future potassium fertilization rate. And uh, our work over the last couple of years has also shown that compared with other apple varieties, Honeycrisp requires lower uh, optimal range of leaf potassium level. For most other varieties, the optimal range for leaf potassium has been 1.3 to 1.8%. However, for Honeycrisp, anywhere between 1% to 1.3% is adequate for growing Honeycrisp. So that's, uh, that suggests to us that Honeycrisp does not need the same amount of potassium supply level as other apple varieties need. So just keep this in mind. Um, to be effective in implementing this nutrient balance and strategy, we really need to know uh, the tree nutrient status, and perhaps more importantly, the fruit nutrient status. So in addition to regular leaf sampling and analysis, uh, we have been recommending in the past, I mean, for Honeycrisp, we wanna shoot for leaf nitrogen level uh, around 2%, 2 to 2.2%. That's the target range for potassium, leaf potassium level I just talked about we should shoot for the optimal range between one to 1.3%. Now, well, because these leaf analysis, you know, leaf sampling and analysis typically happens in late July, early August, it's kind of late in the season. And it does not give us an, a, an a sufficient window of opportunity to address nutrient imbalance issues early in the season. So over the last couple of years, um, we worked with uh, um, Lake Ontario fruit growers and also uh, 
uh, Van de Waal uh, fruit farm and also Cherry Long, uh, Cherry Long Fruit Farm and um, Cornell Nutrient Analysis Lab, Dr. Michael Rutsky and Mario, Terrence and I have been trying a new method called fruit peel sap analysis. So I'm gonna, uh, this is what we are recommending for this growing season. And we're gonna start the uh, peel sap uh, sampling and analysis. So this is a protocol we have developed for this um, coming July. So the timing is July 5th to July 15th when the fruits are at golf ball size. Uh, so approximately 50 gram. And what you need to do is to select 30 representative trees, uh, or 30 trees representative of the block you are interested in testing and take one well exposed fruit at five to seven feet height from each tree. So you would take a total of 30 fruits and then bring the fruits to your barn, wet paper towel with the purified water. Um, and not just your you know, well water or uh, uh, just your, your tap water. We recommend using purified water such as Aquafina, squeeze off any extra water and wipe out any residue on the fruit surface. And make sure the fruit surface, you, know, you can use paper towel to blow dry. So there's no water uh, sort of seen on the fruit surface. And then we peel the fruit. For each fruit, we take two pieces of peel on the opposite size as shown here. So you just use a regular uh, kitchen uh, peeler shown here. You just take one piece from the uh, stem end to the calyx end and then go to the opposite side, do another piece. The fruits shown here, actually we took two pieces on each side because we saved uh, another piece uh, for uh, freeze drying to look at the, you know, uh, peel nutrient levels in the dried fruit. But for you, we only take uh, one piece here and then take the opposite piece there from, for both pieces from the fr uh, stem end to the calyx end. And then put all these pieces into a Ziploc bag and label the bag, your name, the block name, the date you uh, take the sample, and then freeze them. Just throw the Ziploc bag, or make sure you seal the Ziploc bag here tightly to prevent any water loss. So seal the Ziploc bag, and then throw the bag into your freezer. And, um, you, and then when it's ready, let's say at least uh, you keep the uh, sample there for overnight, and then you can contact Mario uh, for pickup. So this is a protocol Mario and I developed for this um, coming July. And Mario and uh, Liz uh, are planning to uh, uh, make a video of PO sampling uh, before July the 5th, and then send it to all of you. So I think that's all I have at this point.